Welcome back. Um, this time we're going to talk about designing continuous beam. Uh, designing continuous beam is just like designing other beam. The only difference is difficulty part of it is how you're going to come up with the maximum moment. Once you have the maximum moment, then the design is the same as the uh, regular beam. So normally uh, you have continuous beam with the equal span and uh, uh, simply supported. You can go to table uh, 322 and get your maximum moment. But sometimes you might end up with a condition that uh, it's not anywhere, so you have to solve it either manually or using the computer. Uh, so now we have this problem. We're going to both solve it two different ways. Use a plastic analysis, uh, using uh, LRFRD plastic uh, uh, analysis, and then find the maximum moment using hand method, virtual method. And then we're going to go ahead and put in a computer, find the maximum moment, and design it that way, using both ways. So we have this problem. Uh, this the way it's uh, this continuous beam is fixed in one end and then on the roller on the other uh, supported. Uh, we have a, a uniform distributive load of uh, one kip per foot and a life load of three kip per foot, and we have a constant load down here in the middle, 15 feet away from the uh, end reaction, of uh, 15 kip dead load and uh, life load of 20 kips. So we were trying to find the uh, uh, the let's uh, size the beam for this uh, situation. First of all, before we do anything, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, um, RFRD, calculate the load. So it's going to be uh, uh, WU is equal 1.2 times uh, 1 plus 1.6 times 3 equal 6 kip per foot. And then we have a concentrated load, so PU is going to become 1.2 times uh, 15 plus 1.6 times 20, and comes out to 50 kip. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and use uh, plastic analysis to uh, solve this to find out the maximum moment. One of the first things we're going to do is uh, do the uh, collapse mechanism. So when we have, we say we're going to load this and to become the plastic uh, situation, so we become plastic hinge developed, and that mean that area right here, here, no longer can resist a moment. So basically, we're going to have a plastic hinge here, plastic hinge here, and a plastic hinge here also. And uh, uh, what happened when we look in the collapse mechanism, we're going to start with an angle theta here, and it's going to go back in angle theta there. Our deflection, say, it's going to be right down the middle. Same here, based on uh, uh, symmetric, it's going to be deflection is going to be middle right here. But when we get, <coughs> excuse me, when we get to the end, the deflection is going to be about 0.414 L from the end. And uh, I'm going to use a, a small angle theory uh, to solve this. That means, like, uh, for example, tangent of theta is equal theta. So if I look at this uh, triangle right there, let me blow up that. It's going to be like this. I want to know what is this uh, right here. Let's call this x. And this is theta. And this L right here is L half, half of L, which is uh, 15 feet. 15 feet. So basically, tangent theta, which is the same as a theta, let's say tangent theta is equal opposite x divided by the adjacent, which is 15. And we said tangent theta in small angle theta is equal theta. So I'm going to say, OK, um, theta is equal x divided by 15. And therefore, x is equal 15 times theta. So this distance right here, that is 15 theta. If we do the same thing over here, same exact way. This distance right here become 20. This is a 20. That's a 40 feet. So this distance is 40. We know that. And I mean, this is a 20. And this is a 20. So this right here, it is 20 theta. This one is going to be different because right here we have 0.414L. That's 1243. And uh, let's find out what is this going to become. I'm going to go ahead and make a blow up right here. And I'm going to have this. It's going to look like this. And this distance is uh, basically uh, 30 minus 12. 
So it is 30 minus 12, that becomes 17.5. All right, 17.58. And this angle is theta. So now this becomes 17.58 theta. So now we have this, and um, this is going back up in a different angle. It goes right here. Let me do the different colors so I can see it better. So it goes up to back in here. And what is this angle here? Well, it's basically, you can go ahead and say this angle we don't know is x. And I'm going to say uh, tangent of x, which is same as the x is equal opposite 17.58 theta divided by uh, our length. Length is 12.43, uh, uh, and therefore our angle right there comes out to x is equal 1.414 theta. So this become 1.414 theta. And this right become 1 coming this way plus that become 2.414 theta. Okay, let me erase this and we continue. <coughs> so now we're going to go ahead um, use, uh, take a look what I have on the board. Let me read it to you. Um, the work performed by the total external load, which is basically your uniform distributed load time L, is equal WNL times the average deflection of the mechanism. So the average deflection equal one half of the deflection that we have. We just calculated that. And then the external work is equal to the internal work absorbed by the hinge, or some of the uh, MN at each plastic hinge times the angle through which it works. All right? So we're going to take a look at the uh, span one. And in the span one, we're going to have uh, mu multiplied by we have mu times the angle, uh, which in here in span one, the angle is going to be multiplied by so one theta here. Two, that makes it three, and one over there makes it four. So it's going to be mu times uh, four theta, and that is equal the uh, wn, which came out to... Uh, Let's just write down WN time time L time average deflection, which is the one half of the deflection we have here, and uh, and plus the concentrated load because as I said, the center PU time the uh, uh, the deflection itself. So if we're going to go ahead and plug this, and it's going to be MU, which we don't know. Mu times 4 theta is equal to Wn became 6 times 30 times 1 half of uh, 15 theta plus Pu came out 50 times 15 theta. And if we divide both sides by 4 theta, so Mu comes out to 525 foot kip. And do the same thing for span two, span two right here. So uh, span two, we have mu time uh, one theta, make it three, make it four. Time four theta is equal, w, u came out to six, l this time is 40, time one half, the angle came out to uh, 20 theta, and uh, that's it, equal. So an uh, MU is equal 600 foot kip. Now we're going to go to the last span, which is a span number three, and we have MU time 
1 theta plus 2.41 makes it 3.414. 3.414 theta. Why didn't I add this one? Because this one is a real hinge. And it's in the end, so it's a real hinge. We leave it be. So that's equal. Um, w, U came out to 6 times uh, 30 times 1 half. And the def average deflection came out to be I know I did it. I know I did it. This was uh, 17.58 theta. Remember we erased it. So time 17.58, and therefore MU comes out to 463.4 cube foot. Moment for each span, and obviously the maximum moment is right here. This one will control. Uh, and uh, <coughs> we just do it. I'm going to go ahead and just do like we usually do with the beam design. We go to table 3-2, and from table 3-2, and we go ahead and we, until we find MU in LRFD closer to 600. Again, remember this 600 you find, it should be the minimum moment that you have on that table. It's a maximum moment here you have found, but when you go to the table, you, you go to find 600, and we can find W21 by 68. But don't be shy to pick something bigger. It's okay to go pick, for example, um, use a moment with 664, pick W24 by 68. But pick and W, for this example, we can go ahead and say, okay, that's 600, try W21 by 68. And from here on, just like I have other video on uh, steel beam design, you do the same thing. See, check for lateral stability, and check for shear, and all that stuff, and basically find out if this m selection you made, is it good enough, or you should go higher. So I'm going to erase this, and we're going to go ahead and uh, try uh, ASD design using a uh, different method. We're going to go ahead and use a uh, allowable stress design method to uh, solve this one, ASD. Um, and our uh, WA comes out to be <coughs> 1 plus 3, which is equal 4 kip per foot. And PU, it's going to be uh, 15 plus 20, which is equal 35 kip. Draw the uh, shear moment diagram here. How I did it, I just went on a computer and plugged that in, and I came up with this. I'll show you in a second. I used a robot structural analysis, and this is how I came up with it. And there's something the, the, uh, the code allows. It says you can use 0.9 rule. That means you multiply the uh, negative moment by 0.9, the maximum negative moment by 0.9, and use that for your uh, whatever control between negative and positive. So uh, 0.9 multiplied by uh, 505, this same section says your maximum moment is going to be either 90% of your maximum negative moment or your positive moment plus 10% of your negative moment. So it's going to be uh, 295 plus 10% of uh, 545, and that is equal 345.5 foot kip. Of course, this one controls. Now, this one controls. You can basically go to the uh, uh, table. Go to table 32 and select the W24 uh, by 76. And you can see this one came out a little bigger than the uh, plastic analysis that we did. And that's why it really pays off always when you do a design, do both in uh, load resistant factor design and allowable stress design, and then compare it. And whatever your comfort level is, pick the one that is you comfortable. Don't be afraid to go one size larger. And now I'm going to show you how we calculate this using a computer. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and use the computer, put this in to f figure out the maximum moment. Uh, open up your, uh, uh, if whatever computer program you have, that's fine. And I'm using Robert Structural Analysis, so I'm going to go ahead and click on 2D framing right here. 
once this opens up, um, I go to the uh, uh, right here, click on uh, member, and I'm gonna define where my member are as, if, as far as the location. Go to zero, mark out, let me get this out of the way so I can see what zero is. Zero with zero marked out, I'm gonna click right here. Notice I'm gonna just pick W24 by 68 in a member. You can take anything you want, it doesn't matter at this point because we're trying to figure out the uh, uh, maximum uh, uh, moment. So I'm gonna use that for now and that will go to zero to zero and there's my uh, clicking once. And then the first one is uh, 30 feet long. And I'm gonna click again one more time to see this better, I'm just going to go ahead and go down here, hit this uh, section shape, and then I can see it better. So I'm going to click one more. The next one was 70 feet, I mean 40 feet. So that brings me to 70. And click right there. Let me center this. And then I'm going to click one more time. And the next one is going to go to 30, which is going to bring it to 100. So this is our member. Uh, I'm going to close this one out right here. And next I'm going to do go ahead and put the... Uh, uh, support into it right here that's a support system right there if you know how i get these support i got many program on this go look at the other ones so i'm going to click on uh, fixed end here so this was a fixed end right this and then i have a uh, roller support right here at this point and one here and one there so it looks like what we have the next thing we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and identify our load, define our load. Click this uh, load type right there. And you're going to hit add. That add means uh, dead load one, which is the weight of the beam itself. Then I'm going to add the second one, which will be the uh, weight of the, uh, the in allowable stress design, we calculate those load. And close, click OK. Then we're going to come in here, we are going to identify the uh, load uh, definition, and we're going to put the load on it. The load we had, the uniform distributed load came out to be 1 plus 3, which, we, which was 4 kip per foot. So I'm going to come in and click on a member, and click on uniform distributed load. And in the Z direction was 4 kip, so that's going to be minus 4, and the unit already here is a kip per foot right here. So I'm going to click Add, and come up here and click on the first span, click on the second span, and click on the third span. And the next one we had was the uh, constant load up here in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and click uh, right here where you see that. It says Member Force, click on that one. And our came out to be uh, uh, 35 kip. So in a Z direction, you're going to type in minus 35 and now down here where it says coordinate, it was halfway in the center span one. So it's a 50%, that's correct. I'm gonna click OK, and then I'm gonna put my cursor right here, and it's gonna put it right there. To see the number, come down here, click on one, two, three on the bottom of your screen, and it tell you where they are. Let me close this out. So there, that's it, basically. Uh, we have, uh, let me bring this up back again one more time. And we're going to go ahead, this is just our beam. And come up here and click a Calculation, and it will run it, runs it for you. And then once you've done that, come back up to Resolve. From Resolve, go to Diagram for the Members. And from here, you can go ahead and click on uh, Moment. That's all I care about. And I'm going to hit Normalize, Apply. Hit this tab over here, go hit the Perimeter. And... Um, label apply so there's my uh, uh and you notice this is kind of upside down compared to what i draw on a board because in robot you can go ahead set your moment whether you want the negative moment up or the negative moment down in this case we want the negative moment up you could reset this so the shape be backward doesn't matter and there it is my maximum moment is 505 right here 505 and that's what we used to calculate our uh, uh, beam design. Hope you like this, and if you do, please give me a thumbs up.